Hi folks and welcome back for another video on what I've been up to. Now this is a follow on video, some of you might have seen the uh, the last video that I posted which was the um, the big bastard high voltage power supply. Well, moving on from that we are now going to build the big fuck off amplifier. <laughs> well, that's the plan anyway. So I'm going to show you some of the bits I've collected for that and I'm also going to run through um, how I'm going to tackle this. This is all a bit experimental, I'm not quite sure where this is all going to work. Um, so if anybody's got any interesting comments, be interested to uh, hear what you have to say. Um, but anyway, I'll, um, I'll, I'll just quickly give you an overview of what we've got so far and uh, take it from there. Well, I guess the inspiration for building this amplifier probably came from a copy of uh, one of the local um, radio magazines that we get here in the UK called Signal Magazine and this is this is a magazine that um, you get if you're a member of the Vintage Military Amateur Radio Society called V-Miles and on the back of that magazine I actually noticed that there was a um, picture of a Harris AM transmitter and that Harris, I think it was a Harris or could be the Gates, anyway one of the two big massive great big floor standing unit and they had it they had the uh, the back of it and inside uh, they had the picture of uh, one of these in fact if it's, it actually had four of these it was um the, the, it was an 833a and it had four it had two 833as in the pa which and the pa was modulated by two um by another two 833as and i thought to myself well now those look quite nice lovely looking valves and they would be pretty good for a an RF amplifier so I thought to myself well if I can uh, get a couple of those and uh, see if we can build up a lovely amplifier and see what um, you know what it can do there are a few problems though and I'll uh, I explain I might go through that with you in a minute um, this valve here that we're going to be using isn't actually an 833A but it's almost identical it's actually a Russian GU48 now I'm going to use, be using two of these in this amplifier. Just to give you an idea of size. That's an 813 or an 813, as our American cousins say. Hoorah! So that's an 813, 813. As you can see, it's um, this 8, this 833A or G48 is um, is pretty big, isn't it? It's quite a big valve. It's a triode, by the way. And being a triode, there are certain limit. There are certain problems with. Um, with running it as in as, as a linear amplifier because normally triodes uh, we normally run as grounded grid now this one or, or the 833a isn't so good for grounded grid because it's it's a medium mu triode uh, so it doesn't really have the you know the gain of like some of these ceramic things uh, it's really designed for uh, class b or class c operation so whether it's actually going to be uh, whether it's going to be linear linear enough, I should say linear enough for things like SSB is going to be a, a little bit of a, a bit of a thumb suck. And uh, oh, I'll come and show you those in a minute actually. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge to try and get this thing to work in class A or class AB, which is what most linear amplifiers run in. You know, class C is all right for CW, which I, I'm fine with. I do a lot of CW, so um, you know, it, it, it may well be fine for that but you know ideally you want to use it on a single sideband so I've got two of those so they, there will be more challenges but I'll, what I'm going to do is I'll get a piece of paper and I'm going to scroll down my thoughts on this and how it's all going to pan out and how it's going to how I'm going to put it all together uh, so that's the uh, that's the valve so I've collected a few other bits and bobs here we've got um, we've got some nice fat caps here uh, this one is uh, hang on, that's that's a big Russian thing, uh, 550 PF I think that goes up to, so that should be good for the plate capacitor. And this one is going to be the loading capacitor, this one, this one's actually quite, actually given to me by a friend. Uh, let's just pull it out, I've, I've been already starting to put the uh, mounting uh, bars on it I should say, this is threaded, threaded bar which I'm going to use for mounting this thing. And that's... Um, I think that's 0 to 3000 puff, so that's actually quite a rare vac cap. You don't usually get them that high, uh, but it's perfect for, uh, you know, for what we're going to be uh, using this for. And uh, I've actually got a uh, now. Where is it? 
Uh, I think it left it in the garage. Anyway, I've actually got a really nice tank coil for this, uh, which I might be able to show you uh, a bit later on. But it's um, uh, you normally with tank coils, I generally wind them myself. I, I get some copper tubing and you know just uh, stick on a mandrel and wrap it up. But uh, uh, I've actually decided to buy a new, uh, well, well, not new, uh, second-hand uh, tank coil, which uh, should be, I think it measures about 22 microhenry. So that should be good for 160 um, up to 20 metres. Uh, that's the plan anyway. Uh, a few other things down here. Uh, these are the filament transformers. I was quite lucky to find these because these, these tubes run at 10-volt, uh, 10 10-amp 10 heaters and... Uh, I got these off um, Mouser, if anybody's interested. These are actually um, filament transformers with a centre tap because obviously we have to... Uh, the plan is to ground the cathodes on these. Um, and, uh, well, uh, that's, that's, that's how it's all going to work. Not gonna, we're not going to have these in grounded grid. We're going to grid drive them. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you a sort of circuit diagram that I've sort of put together. Uh, I'll scroll it out uh, see to see if it's uh, going to work. So that's uh, that's more or less it. Um, what I'll do is uh, uh, I'm going to grab a piece of paper and I'm going to go through this uh, on the bench, and you can see uh, what I've, what I'm planning. Right, this is how I envisage this is all going to work. Uh, this is a sort of lash up of a circuit diagram that I've put onto pen and paper. So we're going to have two GU GU48s, aka. Uh, 833s and the, uh, the plan the, the plan is to have them in parallel and uh, most of the Pi tank and the HT circuitry is pretty conventional uh, what I want to do is get this to work on from 160 to uh, 20 meters but there, there's a there are a few problems with this um, now the problem is these big valves one that it's often quite difficult to get them to tune on the higher frequencies because of the uh, high interelectrode capacitance uh, of the valves. When you've got two together, obviously doubling all that because they're in parallel. Uh, the advantage of using two valves, obviously, you can run a bit more power. And uh, but the other, the drawbacks are obviously, you know, the, for that reason. I mean, on 160 and 80, it's probably not going to be a problem. It's not going to be so much of a major problem. But on the higher frequencies, uh, it, tuning the uh, the Pi network could be uh, a bit of an issue. So the rest of it's pretty conventional. We're going to have a um, uh, RF choke there, plate choke, uh, stat, you know, decoupling capacitors, and um, those those will be the vac caps that I've already shown you. Uh, tank coil. And we're going to switch this with um, some vacuum relays, uh, just to make just to make make it a little bit more tidier, so to speak. That will be the safety choke which we uh, put on in case this fails, and we get we don't want DC coming out onto the antenna. Uh, this will be an, uh, bog standard antiparasitic chokes. But where it gets interesting is this is the grid circuitry. Now, there's two ways of doing this when you when you um, when you're not uh, grounding the grid of a of a triode uh, for a linear amplifier. And there's the the big problem with triodes is that um, and this is one of the reasons why you ground the grid is that they can sort of start oscillating and taking off. And this might be a problem, you know, with this arrangement now. What I've got here is a tuned circuit in the grid, and uh, what we're going to be doing is switching the tapping points of the input and the output. And I've I've used this before. That should probably go like that. Actually, I've used this before in the uh, the GU81 amplifier, and it does actually work quite well for matching uh, the the 50 ohm uh, output of a transceiver into the um, sort of variable and quite high impedance of 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 the of the grid uh, of of the valve. Uh, when you're feeding in most triodes when they're um, <clears throat> in grounded grid you feed them at the cathode and the, the impedance there's a lot more predictable and it's low and it's easier to match um, but with with a when when, it, when it's grid driven you've got a few more problems so that's the tuned circuit and then um, what we're going to have is some resistors here about 2k quite high value which will basically act as a load for the uh, transmitter and also it will also provide a bit of grid leak bias as well uh, so hopefully that might um, improve things but we'll have to wait and see have to suck it and see as they say uh, so 
that's all pretty standard. You've got uh, coupling capacitors there to each grid. Those will all be in parallel. And then here, obviously, we're going to have to have a neutralization arrangement uh, to try and stop the whole thing taking off. Uh, that's going to be quite important, I think. So that's going to be a neutralization capacitor, and I'm going to have to knock one of those up because they're difficult to find neutralization capacitors. And uh, so I'm going to get some stainless steel discs and weld some uh, bolts to it and something like that, and hopefully that might work. Uh, what else? So that's and that's more or less the basic circuit. We'll have a negative bias coming up there, and uh, see what happens. And I know I have seen that there are one or two videos of, um, well, certainly one uh, chap, um, El Paso Tube Amps. So uh, greetings to you if you're watching this. Um, he managed to get a single 833A um, <clears throat> to work on 20 meters. He seemed to do it quite successfully, but. He wasn't using this arrangement, he was using a um, basically what they call a swamped grid. So uh, rather than have that, you have a 50 ohm load and so the so the, the, the input power goes straight into the grid but via that. And, but some of the, the problem with that is that um, I think it's all right with one tube, it probably would work with two tubes where the impedance is going to be different. I don't, uh, I've, I've read reports that that doesn't always work with two, eight, two eight three three A's. So what we'll do is um, we'll try using this. I and mean, the other thing with swamp grid is you obviously you lose power in, which comes out as heat from the uh, uh, from the the resistor. Usually it sort of goes in here, a uh, 50 ohm resistor or something like that. But I don't think that's going to work with this arrangement. So that's why I'm doing a tuned grid uh, circuit. Anyway, um, so that's uh, that's what we've got. We'll see whether it's going to work or not. Um, it's always a bit of an experiment really, I guess. Anyway, I'm going to head off to the garage and start doing a bit of metal bashing and uh, I'll probably do another video of, of uh, what we've done in the, maybe in a, a week or thereabouts. Anyway, thanks for that. Hope you enjoyed it.